Hi, I'm Chris Jones with Deseret Digital Media. Today I'm going to take you on a quick tour of our organization here in Salt Lake City. We've chosen to be different from other media companies in a few key ways. One of which is the fact that we've separated our digital business from our legacy print, TV, and radio businesses. Today you'll have a chance to see what a separate digital organization looks like and how that affects our culture and how that culture has led to some impressive growth. Now this is where you'll find most of our content teams, and this is Chris Lee, president of Deseret Digital Media. We've asked Chris to show us around. Thanks, well it's good to have you with us, you know, wherever you are. It's nice to, nice to uh, have you take a look at uh, Deseret Digital. This is our content team that we'll show you, and you'll see some other teams uh, coming up in, in additional segments. Uh, collectively, we do about a billion ad impressions a month uh, between our various sites. At DeseretNews.com, there's a top 30 uh, newspaper website. KSL.com is the largest uh, broadcast media website in the country, local broadcast media website in the country. Up the middle here, you've got our DeseretNews.com team. Um, and what you'll see right away is uh, data uh, on screens displayed uh, around, the, around the floor. Uh, so we've got Chartbeat, Google uh, Analytics, uh, and Adobe Analytics that uh, give our teams up-to-date information, real-time information on what's uh, working on the site and what's not working. Uh, the Desert News National team um, is, uh, is next to me here. In the back, we've got our KSL.com team. Behind them is our, uh, some of our developers, and you'll see this throughout the organization. Developers like it dark, so we've got a lot of dark spaces where we have developers working on their screens. Uh, I don't know why they like it that way, but <laughs> we close the windows and let them go to work on code. Nobody knows. <laughs> Uh, we also have our Deseret Connect team in the back. We, we actually, uh, uh, Deseret Connect and other um, platforms that we're building uh, to allow our, our content teams to have tools that work across all of our content uh, teams. Uh, this is part of our publisher solutions uh, team as well that produces uh, products for other publishers uh, like yourselves. Uh, behind us, uh, behind the camera, is an analytics team uh, that builds uh, dashboards for reporting purposes for our, us internally and externally with clients. And then we've got our, our, uh, our brand view team, which is our native advertising uh, studio, where we're producing content uh, on behalf of advertisers. And last but certainly not least, our social team that does just amazing things. Tell us about that. So uh, not, not everybody knows, but we, we operate a, a, a network of properties called Family Share. And uh, our, our social team, uh, sits over here and manages those the, these uh, websites, familyshare.com, familias.com in Spanish, familia.com.br in Portuguese, and a series of social channels in Facebook, Pinterest, Google+, uh, and Twitter that uh, allow us to get uh, huge reach. We have more than 100 million social follows um, uh, in, uh, in uh, most of the Americas in, in multiple languages. Uh, and uh, they, they produce about uh, between a third and a half of our traffic on, uh, on various websites. So it's, a, it's become a, a major source of traffic for us. Excellent. Well, thank you, Chris. So the better these uh, content teams are at reaching, growing, engaging audience, the better our product is for our sales teams to sell. So let's go downstairs now and meet some of our digital sellers. Now this is Dell Darling, our VP of Sales. Dell, our digital sellers are all separate from our legacy sellers. Why did we do that, and how do they operate? Well, in the transformation A and transformation B of it, in the disruption that we pride ourselves on, we came to the point in time where we realized our growth had maximized. We were never going to get more out of a combined Uber seller or a seller that that could think of both or one that was dedicated to one and could tap into another. And we yeah. realized our growth, the, the curve that we were on it, we wanted that margin. Clark Gilbert was adamant, we need to split, we need to and become specialists like these people in selling digital only. They don't think of print, they don't think of TV, they don't think of radio. They just focus on a digital solution for their clients. And the result of that has been that we've been able to grow, we've been able to hit those digital uh, marks that, that Clark wanted us to hit. 
Um, but also, there's been a, be a benefit to our legacy sellers. They're able to grow and, and expand what they do as well because they don't have to worry about the digital side of it. Right, so everybody wins. The digital seller becomes focused on what they do and they're attacking a bucket, a revenue stream that someone from the TV side may not have known existed or understood how to tap into it. And conversely, now if you're a radio salesperson, you're just worrying about radio. You understand the marketplace better, you advance in the details around who you're competing with, and you're not looking over your shoulders like, am I doing enough to sell the website? They just sell their radio properties, and they do it really well, and they've won as well. We've, we've seen a pretty significant growth in radio, TV's a little flatter, but it's had some success as well. All right, thanks, Dell. That's great. Now, our revenue strategy goes beyond digital advertising. We believe in a diversified approach to revenue, and that brings us here to Eric Bright, our VP of e-commerce, and Eric is going to introduce us to some of our marketplace products, and he's also gonna show us how our newly remodeled workspace plays into culture. Hey, Chris. Hey. So yeah, we have 10 marketplace products that we manage, 10 sites we manage over here, and as the group grew, we just needed more space. And this space is kind of a manifestation of the culture we've built here. So it's based on openness, transparency, um, equity, and then uh, really energy. We wanted to leave a lot of things open. We, we tried to mitigate noise over work areas. We wanted noise and activity so that you could feel the vibe and the energy that the group has. So. Um, nobody on this space has uh, any different space than anybody else. Everyone sits in the same area. We wanted to make sure that people first, so everybody has the same access to open natural light outside. We put all of the conference rooms either in the middle or at the end of the floor. Uh, we created a bunch of different workspaces. So we have 22 different collaboration or meeting areas and all different varieties. So we have formal lounges and informal lounges. We have meeting space for uh, sellers to bring clients in and run a pitch through. We have little quiet phone booths where people can stand up from their desk, go take some time if they need to hammer something in quiet, they can knock that out. I think people who haven't worked in this environment and, and especially who are coming from a traditional newsroom type environment will think, how in the world do you get anything done? Your, your spaces are open, nobody has this private space, there's pool tables, ping pong tables. That hasn't been the case for us though. What, yeah, I'm kind of one of those guys that says if you're going to reduce uh, productivity, reduce it in a collaborative way that builds culture. So sure, if somebody's going to get up and play ping pong, they're probably not getting the, their project out right that minute, but people need time. They need a break. They need time to work together. Uh, and actually, you'd be surprised how much we get out the door. I mean, we still get a whole lot of stuff out the door, and people don't walk away here every night going, oh my gosh, what, did, what a drudge to go do that all day. We want people to wake up in the morning and feel like, oh, I love working there. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna give more effort versus wake up in the morning and just be like, I hate that place. Awesome, thank you so much, Eric. Yep. You know, I think a lot of times when people think about Deseret Digital Media, they tend to focus on the transformation that's happening on the digital side, and that's understandable. What they might not realize is that there is a tremendous transformation that's taking place on the legacy side. So let's go now and see what the Deseret News and KSL are doing. Now to give you a little perspective, the DDM content teams are just across the way. Our digital sellers and our marketplace team are on the floor below us, and this is the lobby of the Deseret News. And this is Allison Pawn, the editor of the national edition of the Deseret News. Now, Allison, the Deseret News has been around a long time. It has very deep roots, and yet it continues to grow and continues to transform. Tell us a little bit about that transformation. Well, the printed word has always been very important to our community and in our legacy. Uh, you see here in our lobby a replica of the printing press that the Mormon pioneers brought across the plains with them 160 huh. years ago. And so continuing that legacy, um, the language and the printed word has, has always been an important part of the community where the Deseret News is located. So tell us now a little bit about that transformation then. Um, so especially with our national edition, we have a transformation that focuses on a couple of things, um, on audience and on content. In terms of audience, 
we are targeting a specific audience nationally mm -hmm. that cares about reading the news through the lens of faith and family and feel like they don't always get the angles that they're looking for. Our intention is to try to fill that gap and one of the ways that we do that is through our enterprise team where we have um, seven reporters and they are assigned beats in these areas of emphasis. Mm -hmm. So for example, we have a reporter who covers family and she is becoming a national expert on not just tips for your family, though that's part of what she writes, but um, deep dives into demography and how it's changing and you know marriage rates and, and things like that. And she's actually won some great national awards in the last year. The same thing happened with our religion reporter who won a big national award for a body of work that he's done. And so we've really found that focusing and having reporters who can become experts on these things has uh, worked really well and paid great dividends for us. Fantastic work, Allison. Thank you so much. We've got one more stop. Let's head back downstairs. Well, we've spent a lot of time showing you how we function with a separate digital organization. I think a lot of people are surprised on these tours when we show that in many ways, lots of our brands work more closely together now than they did before. And that's evident here in our combined newsroom. Well, this is Doug Wilkes, managing editor of our news division. And Doug, tell us, what are the different brands that we have down here in our newsroom? How do they work separately? How do they work together? So the key is that we have four platforms. So, and it's print and broadcast journalism. But uh, one platform with web, we have ksl.com, deseretnews.com. We have KSL Radio, KSL TV, and then we have the Deseret News Print Edition, yeah. which is the Utah Regional Edition. Um, the key for us is really being able to manage the staffing with the crush of news that we have. And the platforms do have different um, sort of sensibilities and different yeah. missions. Yeah. Uh, for example, KSL.com and KSL Radio are really a breaking news brand. And we marshal the resources we need to to, uh, to cover that news. Yeah. Deseret News has a more of a national platform, um, more issue oriented, and we kind of we manage that. My job is to really uh, make sure that the voice is consistent. One thing we've noticed with the combined newsroom is you have to have experts. I still need someone who can write an A1 Sunday piece in the print edition. I still need someone on TV who's an expert and can really handle a situation with only 15 minutes notice. Yeah. So whereas we have cross-platform training, experts are still required. A lot to think about and a lot to manage. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. And thank you. We hope this is helpful as you begin to think through your own culture, audience needs, business needs, and transformation.